Hey folks, welcome back to Jerome B. Farm and Homestead. So it's been quite a while since I've shot a homestead update. So uh, it's uh, August 20th, so we're getting uh, close to the fall. And I thought I'd walk around the house and show you some of the flower beds and some of the stuff that my wife has done. And uh, we have got our wood chips that I chipped uh, last year. And most of them are up here in the flower beds and for weed suppression and it turned out really nice and then uh this week we got a like a torrential rain and we got uh, that's one and a half inches in like 45 50 minutes so some of the wood chips are now out on the sidewalk so we got to rake those back in but Let's walk around real quick and uh, I'll show you what these are. So we got uh, here elephant ears and we had some azaleas in here and the uh, arctic blast just killed them. So we're going to have to replant any azaleas if we if we want any. So here's some of the wood chips that wound up out on the sidewalk. Uh, you got the gutter discharge right there and we have caladiums planted all along in there. So once those start coming up we'll put the wood chips uh back in there but uh yeah when my dad would come and help mow on wednesdays for me my mom would come out here and she'd pull weeds man like two hours she's a weed pulling machine so the weeds were just overtaking us so we uh got these wood chips in here and man it just it pretty much put an end to them and there's some uh, weed barrier underneath, underneath all of that. So all the begonias turned out nice. Uh, so we started those begonias from seed. And uh, yeah, they turned out nice. And we just put this hummingbird feeder up here. And uh, so that's my office window right there. So I can sit there and try to work while all this cool stuff is going on outside my window and uh, this hibiscus it's pretty much done now but man it was gorgeous it had blooms all over it look there's still a lot of blooms in there yet to come there's another one over there and it's got a little bit of disease on it so i'm not sure what happened with it but uh, it's not it's struggling so that's it right there yeah so those were the same size plant at the same time and it got it's kind of got a rot to it so it's getting over that she's got these nice uh, Boston ferns up here and uh, I complained to her on this one it's such you're blocking my view <laughs> I can't see my beehives for your big green plant so and she's got these pelican things going on here. Maggie's barking at me. What do you want? What are you barking at? Huh? It's me. <laughs> uh, so there's some of the caladiums coming up. Actually, those aren't caladiums, those are cannas. Uh, right there. I thought we had caladiums, but they're cannas. And uh, some petunias. And I think that's a dahlia. And I know that's a dahlia. There's one in the back that's so big that uh, it uh, is just falling over. So this is the south side. This side gets so hot. And uh, right here's where. We run out of wood chips, so I got some dead elms that uh, we'll get on as soon as it cools off a little bit. But yeah, the, the dark red with the lighter brick uh, really looks good. So these wood chips are also going to help keep this uh, splash down from uh, splashing the mud up on there and turning that reddish brown. But uh, once we get them all on there, then I'll try and clean that off maybe. And the marigolds. Yeah, 
this is a back corner here and I got this is where I first started with the wood chips and uh, this rose here was supposed to be a not a climbing rose and it turned out to be a climbing rose so we're gonna have to move it it's just turned into a giant crab taking over so plan is this fall we're gonna move it back there and transplant it where that trellis is And these little shrubs, and I don't remember what they're called, they were froze to the ground. And every one of them's coming back now. And that one there's blooming a little bit. But yeah, we thought those were a total loss. And you can see, there's the wood chips. So I've got these uh, drains right here I put in before we did anything. So the backyard all, or this back bed combines and goes around and drains out down there. And then the ones in the front have two drains that goes out in front of the house. I put some valves in our watering system. So I shut the water off there because it's just getting wet and making it like a swamp back here. And this is uh, back towards the north. So it doesn't get near as much water or sun here. So it, uh, it gets really wet. You can see there's actually, it's mossy in there. So there's wood chips again. <laughs> and we had this cage out. We were treating chickens. Our chickens had a respiratory disease. We bought chickens from a guy and uh, just a private individual. And that was a mistake. Uh, he didn't take good care of them. They were nice looking chickens, but they were sick. And we didn't know when they infected the chickens we had. And we lost some because of that disease. So we've been treating chickens. We've been giving them uh, stuff in water and uh, also been giving them uh, antibiotic shots. Uh, we're through all that. So I'll give you an update on the chickens here in a little bit. So look, we've got uh, new piles of dirt, uh, this update. <laughs> and this thing is still sitting up here, big giant white thing. So that's a 2000 gallon cistern tank and it was in here. And we got a big rain back in July and I had the thing filled uh, almost up to where that outlet is and the thing still floated and it was buried uh, up to that corner right there and the thing still floated on me uh, so all the water kind of rushes and channels in here and uh, it floated that thing and there wasn't dirt on top of it yet so that's what got me but anyway i pumped all the water out floated it on top of the water got the tractor and drug it out so it's been up there uh, since july and I get down here with my tractor and uh, this is a really steep incline and uh, I get as much dirt as I can and I pull it out and stack it up over there and that's what you saw getting this ready to put that back in. Well, uh, I'd go down a foot or so and I'd get to mud and my tractor would get stuck so then I'd have to use my front end loader to push my way out of here. So I've been doing that and uh, got it almost on grade and then we had that big rain. So I pumped this out twice since then. And you can see it's caving in on the sides now. So it's undercutting my sidewalk and it's gone in about two foot there. So I've decided I'm gonna uh, abandon trying to get it all with the tractor. I'm just gonna go at it with a shovel now. Uh, I think I am. I may, I may not once I start because shoveling sucks. But I'm gonna try and shovel it out, get it on grade and uh, get that thing back in there. So I got to do it on a, on, on a week where I know we're not going to get any rain for at least a week. So give me time to get it in there and get it covered up and all plumbed in correctly and covered up. Then I will build a little bit of a berm out here. So any water coming down off hill will divert away and not soak in the ground here and float that thing up again. And I'm going to fill it completely with water uh, this time. So in here, in the... Uh, apartment we've been working on bottling honey so I've got uh, 
all of that's bottled up there and uh, we've got some jars that uh, for personal use we're gonna put some in just some regular jars and I got a few supers out there still on the hives so that'll get us a little bit of fall honey and uh, you can see where I've been bottling it up these are one pound bottles and this year we've got two pound bottles and I added glass some people wanted glass so they better come buy it <laughs> I bought a bunch of these cases of glass bottles uh, and I bought enough for 700 pounds of honey and I had just over 300 so I'm gonna have a good start on bottles for next year uh, we also added bears the bears so those are 12 ounces these are three quarter pound that's it for in here hey shadow so out here we had a bunch of uh, clover and it was getting really tall and it was starting to you know not bloom as much so we went ahead and mowed that down to grade and uh, so that it'll start coming back here in a little while I uh, trimmed up the, the uh, fruit trees that cherry tree we got cherries off it the first time this year and that tree is six years old now yeah that is how crappy our dirt is and it's starting to put up some suckers up so that's not a good sign I trimmed those off I hope uh, the graft isn't uh, giving out and I, I trimmed up the uh, rest of the fruit trees so we had just been letting them grow normal uh, how they were growing and leaving the bottom limbs on to give uh, the roots you know more uh, nutrient from the sun and all so the roots can get developed and we hadn't ever pruned them so I did prune these and uh, the limbs are back here and uh, we're gonna run them through we and I will run them through the con the uh, chipper and just shoot them into the compost because they still have all the leaves on them and some of that's elm is in there as well so here's uh, what's left of the wood chip pile I probably have uh, one maybe two uh, front end load on the tractor left there but uh, I've got some dead elms that uh, in fact they're right here from the Dutch elm disease so I'll take these out and I'll chip all that up all the way down to where it's four inches and that'll make me a bunch of chips and our big old tree we called Henry is a big old elm tree that is over there and uh, it's dead huge elm tree it's kind of sad but we're going to cut that down and uh, that'll make a lot of wood chips here as well uh, compost so we're putting uh fresh garden and wood chips from the uh, chicks in here and that's a bunch of uh, apples apple peel uh, we uh, harvest our neighbor's apples he gives them to us and uh, we pay him back with the cobbler <laughs> so that's the uh, newest compost pile the compost pile that's basically ready to go is underneath all of that and those giant sunflowers ragweed crabgrass weeds Ugh. But uh, yeah, real fertile dirt, weeds really like it. So that's, uh, that's underneath there. So I'm gonna move that down here. I'll trim it all back with uh, my brush cutter weed eater and get all that off of there, mix it up. And I'm gonna take it over to this garden here, the big garden that uh, had visions of, of wonderful, giant, lush, long rows of tomatoes. And here they are. <laughs> so the tomato man oh it's bad so we didn't get them out till uh late june so we raised these from seeds they're finally starting to look decent but most of them died you can see all the empty spots and i think the rain was too much for that one uh that or the vines broke somehow it's croaking out so i've got maybe four tomato plants and it, and in the late part of August and that's all the bigger they are so 
we basically haven't had any tomatoes this year which is a sad thing because I love salsa so we harvested all of our onions from right here and we had us a nice harvest on those this is asparagus well, it's second year and it's doing good and there's some little shoots in there that I planted uh, that we started from seeds this year so those are in there and this part of the garden was supposed to be watermelons and cantaloupe and it never it, it just got too late uh, we had too much rain too much rain couldn't get in here to work it so my plan for this now is uh, I want to tarp some of it and get it covered up uh, like I've done with that uh, weed barrier there but I want I just want to get a big tarp and a uh, Haas tools is out of stock on the one that I wanted but uh, anyway so I'm gonna uh, hill this up I'm gonna make a row a walking row on the edge of this tarp or uh, on the edge of that weed barrier and uh, then tarp from that over and make me a row uh, of cool weather crop and uh, I want to check that out my seeds and see what I've got and uh, that'll be mainly for chicken feed during the winter to get them some greens and uh, I've got some uh, low tunnel PVC already ready to go and uh, I'll build that over this row here and uh, in prior years I had that up in the raised bed garden up there and uh, I'm just going to transition that down here but I'm going to uh, get that compost from the uh, jungle over there out from underneath it and I'm going to till that compost in uh, in the middle there and that's the plan for this for the fall garden and winter garden uh, we might get some tomatoes like in October I don't know it's I'm not I'm not planning on tomatoes I see a lot of uh, paste picante sauce in my future <laughs> we put a uh, game camera right there uh, looking up towards the chickens uh, so I could see how effective the uh, chicken fortress of solitude is so I've got a shot of a bobcat walking right here and I'll put that in right here and uh, it appears to be working nothing's got in there yet uh, it has uh, electric fence along the middle it's six foot high and there's electric fence along the top okay we'll give a little quick garden tour so the chicken pen comes all the way around here and uh, there's one of our blue laced wine dots one of the two survivors of the coyote attacks so uh, if you don't know the history we lost uh, 19 chickens in a couple days they were hopping over I think they were hopping over our electric uh, premier one fence so uh, that stuff looks cool and it worked for three years and uh, then it didn't work anymore so cypress vine we got going all up in here uh, and this passion flower there's a bumblebee on there so this is the first year we've had this passion flower uh, actually make it this large and it's actually vining clear over that direction you can see the flowers that haven't bloomed yet so it's a really neat flower but this is the first year that uh, it's made it this big before all the uh, caterpillars ate it down from the gulf flitterary and I probably didn't say that right butterfly so it's a little orange butterfly and uh, they like to feed exclusively on that so that's probably what's eating that leaf right there and uh, that actually survived the cold winter and came up uh, from root so we're happy with that let's get in here and we'll show you the inside the garden real quick it's 
So the watering system has worked great. Uh, haven't really needed it much. A little bit in July, so it's on a timer right there. And uh, it's on a 48 hour rain delay, I set it for, because of all the rain we've had. Uh, so there's a few tomatoes right in here. And uh, the Last Hope tomatoes. And there's one there. We have cilantro coming up here and cucumbers. Our cucumbers had awesome vine, but uh, they all turned out normal on the end of the vine and skinny farther down like that. So I, I think what happened was uh, when they needed pollinated, we were getting tons of rain. So I don't think they got pollinated very well. Anyway, so the vines look pretty good. Uh, getting a little bit of blight in there, you know, but that's normal at this time of year. And the cucumbers over here are an heirloom variety. I think they're called lemon cucumbers. And uh, on the inside, they look just like a normal cucumber but uh we give those to the chickens hey roddy so that's roddy she's named after rod stewart because of her hairdo she's a polish chicken so those three are survivors of the coyotes uh, we have uh five survivors of the coyotes <laughs> and some chicks and i'll show you them in a second so these are Blue Lake Bush green beans, and they pretty much played out and uh, did a good job. And over here we have, these were our Blue Lake uh, pole beans, and they did excellent. So that's actually made it up there on its own. Last year I had strings on here, but uh, these are nice uh, big beans they make. And the thing I like about these, they produce a lot of beans in a small area. So you can walk up, all up and down here will be full of beans. And you don't have to bend over to pick them, uh, except, you know, the ones down low. And it's on both sides. So yeah, those are starting to grow out that direction there, down that panel. So yeah, I really like those. In fact, they're not blue like, oh, I got these from, I think, Johnny Seeds. I'll, I'll put, uh, down below what these really are but man they're really good and we've ate some and they're really good uh, some of the volunteer tomatoes that we that I transplanted so they're starting to put on a few little tomatoes and we've actually harvested a few but there's not much size to them and they're spindly plants the marigolds are kind of taking over <laughs> but this is where I had the uh, the low tunnels and these two things right here uh, a couple years ago so this year we started strawberries right here and they're doing really good we picked quite a few off of these the other night and, yeah there's not any in here right now but yeah we're gonna have to thin this out next year they're doing well and any cypress vine that came up back in the back, we just kind of let it grow up. And this is where the uh, squash was. We got maybe three or four squash before the squash uh, beetles, the vine, the vine boring beetles killed the plant and then the squash beetles were not far behind. And that's Sunflower. She is a Americana. And this one's an Americana too. I don't remember her name. My wife names them all. It's going to be interesting when we got 30 chickens in here. <laughs> How she names them. I have some dill. So that's it for the garden. Uh, so let me show you what's going on in the coop. So pretty neat. So yeah, you can see fence the six-foot fence there 
and we got the still got the premier one energizer going uh, for that electric line right there this uh, fodder feed system has worked well all year so some of the clovers coming up and blooming now the white clover it'll actually get tall and underneath that's shorter clover and there's some red clover coming up too but uh, yeah they munch on this and they can't get in there and kill it so we've been keeping this watered pretty much so here's uh, the chick project so we've got uh, 24 chicks we've got uh, 12 Americanas six whiting true blues uh, and six buff orpingtons and that's a whiting true blue right there i think it's yeah here they come so i built this uh extra brooder uh because this other one that i've used in prior years and it's right here is too small <laughs> so we're going to get these let these out and introduce them in a couple more weeks uh, they'll be big enough and right now these chickens the big ones are getting used to seeing them so when they're out of here it won't be a surprise to them and they won't uh, jump on them and, and try and pick on them but if they do uh, so what we'll do is this is uh, where the little chicks will go in and out. I'll open this up and the little chicks can get in and out of here and go back in here and be safe in their place that they're uh, comfortable with. And uh, the big chickens can't get in there. So it's kind of an introductory, uh, intermediate uh, introduction technique. So once they get bigger and used to the the uh, chicken run out here and everybody's acclimated they'll figure out that they can go in right here and in the coop with the big chickens and where all the roosts are and all of that and uh, this door goes down uh, in the evening and on, it's automatic on a timer in there and it's all solar powered and there's also a light in there solar powered uh, that I can turn the light on and there's the solar panel there so there's a battery in there and a solar controller but yeah well, i'm excited especially the wife about the the new chicks so we're trying out some new breeds the uh, whiting true blue is one we haven't had before and we do have some americanas and they're very friendly uh, chicks and these uh, buff orpingtons are very friendly as well just like a cat man they'll hop right up in your lap so you can see some of the uh, fall flowers wildflowers are starting to bloom so I think that's a variety of goldenrod uh, it's shorter than most goldenrod but I think that's what it is but when the goldenrod blooms uh, your fall flow is starting goldenrod uh, is a good source of nectar and pollen for the bees and uh, when it's in the hive curing it smells like dirty gym socks it stinks <laughs> but it tastes good uh, it makes a darker honey and uh, i really like it and that's what we're going to save mostly for our personal use and i don't know what this is but it makes uh, yellow flowers and all the pollinators get on that the Vitex have been in full bloom for oh, a little over a month now. It has purple flowers and bumblebees, honeybees, moths, all kinds of pollinators get on that. I planted those probably four years ago. They're doing pretty good. They're really hardy, drought tolerant. So this row right here, you can kind of make out is where I tilled this and I planted, I think it was a five pound bag of different clovers and flowers for pollinators. Uh, there's a few little flowers, but not many. 
uh, it got pretty hot and dry for a little while and I did try and keep it watered every now and then but there is some uh, different clovers coming up there you can see so uh, I was hoping that would uh, all be in bloom right here in the dearth but that didn't work out like I had planned it it goes clear up past that tree and I transplanted some uh, sunflowers in there but that's what those dead things are they don't like being transplanted at all so the big rain uh, filled the pond up it didn't run over the spillway but uh, it filled it up lickety split I'll show you a shot of that right here So kind of a new development, uh, right here is my north property line. And my neighbor that lives uh, to my south bought this piece of land. And they are, they took out all the trees over there and they're leveling it out. And he's gonna build a house over there. So I hope it doesn't uh, impact the uh, wildlife I've got going on here. Cause all my wildlife videos are shot down in here. So there's uh, eight or nine cameras down in here shooting the deer, the fox, the bobcats, coyotes. The creek cam, bridge cams right down there about 80 feet down that hill. So check out uh, Game Cam Wildlife. And uh, I put a lot of the videos on my intros for the beekeeping. And uh, I might put some on this one. We'll see. There's the bees. Bees are doing way better than uh, I had hoped for this year. We had a decent harvest and we are 32 queen right hives. I just built this stand. You probably saw that in a prior video. And these boxes here are to go on these two little nukes. So these are the gifted wildflower meadows queens uh, that are in those little nukes being banked. So we have not had to make a withdrawal from the bank thus far. Uh, there's one hive, uh, 26, uh, right there. That is very weak. And the queen has shown some sign of actually uh, laying a little bit. So they have just eked along all year. So that may get requeened with one of these. I don't know. But uh, this is the uh, north side. So all these hives here are a lot newer than the ones down here as far as uh, age-wise and being put there. The oldest ones are uh, probably three years old. So from a beehive perspective, they're really not new anymore. Uh, some of these are being uh, rejuvenated. Uh, through requeening and whatever because uh, the queens get old and they're not productive anymore so that hive number one right there is a tiny swarm that showed up and I captured them and that hive one that was there before had just uh, played out there was not hardly any bees in there and I discovered that uh, in July during the harvest uh, unlucky 13 right here is still not doing very well uh, so I did load them up with a, a whole frame feeder full uh, they got a decent queen in there they just need to get going I think I neglected to feed them in the dearth and they struggled just to get to that point then the dearth hit and they got they didn't have food so I think they struggled just to get where they're at now but I'm going to focus on hive growth now and health and uh, getting these built up and ready for winter. So hopefully hive unlucky 13 will be lucky. So we've got a few supers on and some of these had uh, undrawn frames so there won't be anything in them. But some of them did have some drawn frames and a little bit of uncapped honey. 
uh, when I harvested. So I'm hoping I'll have a little bit of fall honey in these to harvest. And that'll be that dark honey. There's one. I know that's got some in it. So I have uh, one customer that likes the dark honey. And uh, she was buying it from me. And I had some that was like two years old. And uh, she's having uh, health issues. She's really struggling. So at Christmas time, she came and brought me money to buy some. And I, I just uh, gave her a nice Christmas gift. And I gave her, I think, uh, three quarts of it and said here uh, Merry Christmas and uh, she has some jars for me too and I wonder how she's doing now because it's been a while since I've heard from her yeah so thanks if you made it this far uh, we still got a lot of things going on around here uh, right now our focus is working on the bees uh, getting them strong and healthy so we'll be doing mite treatments here before long and uh, we still got those uh, supers on for a small fall harvest and uh, we'll get that in at some point and uh, also i got to get that water tank in the ground that's my uh, number one priority right now along with the bees uh, someone asked me a while back how do i keep up with things and my answer was i don't uh, i prioritize and uh, i do what's on top of the list and uh, what's the most important gets done and uh, other things don't get done uh, like mowing. I wasn't mowing for quite a while. My grass was getting out of control and uh, my mom and dad came down and uh, they actually three weeks came and, and my dad mowed like six hours straight uh, in the heat of the day. So uh, they're retired so they come down and help me out and uh, so that allowed me to uh, get a lot of things done that I couldn't get to. But uh, yeah I got to get that uh, water tank in the ground uh, so that's going to be a priority along with the bees right now. So uh, that's basically it. So give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And uh, we'll catch you on the next uh, video. Y'all take care.